Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Creekmer, aka Jigsaw with allhiphop.com. And we are here with Miss Oprah Lee. A, well, I don't know if you do you say your name, your age still, or is that something that we should keep? keep? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a 93 year old getting in everybody else's business, and I enjoy it. All I'll right. be 94 in October. Oh, okay. All right. What, what, what day were you born in October? October the 7th, 1926. All right, all right. My daughter was born on the 3rd of October. So tell guys, the child, tell her we need to have a party. Tell yeah. her we should have a party. <laughs> right, I'm going to lock that in on my uh, calendar so we can celebrate you every year from here on, for sure. <laughs> so I just want to say you are the, uh, what I would say is the premier uh, person on the forefront of making Juneteenth a nationally recognized holiday, federally. Well, I, 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 I don't know that I'm the only one. We have an organization <clears throat> called NJOF, the National Juneteenth uh, Observance Foundation that's working just as hard as I am to get yeah. Congress and the presidents and whomever to make Juneteenth a national holiday. Now we don't talk about um, a paid holiday, but I am delighted to know that there are some companies that are giving up their employees off on Juneteenth with pay. Oh, I could dance a holy dance. <laughs> I wish I got off Juneteenth. Oh, by the way, I have, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. What were you saying? I, I didn't get it. I thought you were saying something. Well, I wanted to tell you this before I wanted to, I, I needed to say this because my, this is actually the 30th year of my father's passing, but he was born on Juneteenth. And oh. yeah, so Juneteenth is always an extra special day for me for not only the, um, you know, implications for black people in America, but uh, it's my dad's birthday too. How about that? My son was born on the 16th and he's my second child. And I just sent him a potted plant. I, I don't like cut flowers. I want you to have something you can grow, you know? And he's just out of the hospital. He had knee surgery, but he's okay. doing fine. And he's, he must be 74. And I have a daughter, seven to six. Uh, we, you know, been around a little while. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, that's amazing. That's beautiful. <laughs> uh, so tell, this is probably, uh, possibly a silly question, but we do have a, an audience that's skews on the younger side. So tell folks out here why Juneteenth is important. Oh, I gotta begin from the beginning because there are so many of them that are not aware that slaves were freed on the 19th of June in 1865, but the proclamation had been two and a half years earlier. And these slaves were still slaves until Gordon Granger made his way to Galveston and informed them that they were no longer slaves. And when they did that, they began to celebrate and we've been celebrating. Now, our celebration actually starts with a flag raising and a breakfast of prayer. We don't, um, you're not to confuse that with a prayer breakfast, a breakfast of prayer where we give thanks. Thanks, you know that, um, Slaves, New Year's Eve would have what was called watch party. They were watching for freedom to come. So we always begin our celebration with a breakfast of prayer. And we have so many other things other than the festival. We, um, we had a food giveaway last year that was off the chain. We had so much food and that's one of my passions because I was responsible with some other people of starting a food bank that is 
servicing some 500 families a day. And you should hear the story of how we had a place that burned and we rented or leased this place at $4,000 a month. And I just nearly had a hemorrhage because I didn't know where we were going to get it. But we did pay it for 11 months. And the 12th month, when we didn't have the money, the owners came to us and said, you're doing a good job. We're going to give you this facility. It's a $1.3 million facility that they gave to our group. So uh, uh, I want you to know that from that, we have a farm I asked for and the Trinity River Authority gave us 13 acres to farm. Uh, and I chose to work with people who'd been incarcerated and couldn't find a job. We propose paying them a living wage and we propose when they have opt out of the program for them to have some certification from one of the colleges around here that says they are master gardener or know how to take produce to the market or that they know to how to clean the produce up. They know how to guard, how to farm. All of these things are associated with that farm. Now, Juneteenth is responsible for these things. We don't want people to think that when we have a festival, that's all we do because the art, I, I can't begin to tell you about the art. The public school permitted the children to uh, be a part of it, and they were given 12 freedoms that the slaves got. And that was that they were able to name themselves. They were able to get the, have children that weren't taken away from them. <clears throat> uh, there were so many things that were that were a part of that jurid affair, you know, of, of, of Juneteenth. I, I, I wish I could articulate it, but I can't. No, no, you, you're doing, you're doing great. So that's important to note that it's not just one day; it's something that is celebrated throughout the whole year, basically. And and do you know one of the companies has said, like I've been saying for years that we ought to have Juneteenth from the 19th to the 4th of July. Slaves mm. weren't free on the 4th of July and we celebrate the hell out of it. So we ought to be doing the same thing with Juneteenth. So let's combine them. Let's have something going from the 19th to the 4th of July. Wouldn't that be something? That would be great. And I think we should have, you know, uh, uh, an education across the uh, all the schools in America too to reorient people to this day so that we all celebrate that day because that's the real day of, uh, of freedom. I agree America. with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly. There are, I know there's one Juneteenth book in the libraries in Texas done by uh, Dr. Charles Taylor, mm -hmm. and he's out of Madison, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That book, but I've written one for the little ones called Juneteenth, a children's story. And huh? I want them to know about, yeah, can you see yes. that? Yes, we can. Okay, so I, I, I'm wanting children to have something factual what we have in the in the um curriculum now is shameful you know cotton fields and everybody think we were happy picking cotton i pick some and i know better than that you know right. so what would you say is the uh, status of it possibly becoming a, a, a nationally recognized holiday? what's the what's the, the latest for Juneteenth to be a national holiday, it means that 
it's more than this little old lady in tennis shoes. And our organization, the National Juneteenth Observers Foundation, it means that there are thousands, millions of people who are embracing the idea that we should unite. We, 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 oh, I'm trying to say that unity means so much and Juneteenth is the vehicle to get us to unite. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to say it any plainer than that. Okay. Now you've lived quite a few years and seen so much, but I, I'd like for you, first of all, if you can speak on some of the terrorism that you faced. There's a specific story I'm thinking of that you tell it. Okay. You, you may have to repeat that for me. Uh, well, when we, when, in America, when we talk about terrorism, we often are talking about people in other countries. But sometimes this is actually taking place right here as a black people in the US. And I was wanting you to speak to your experience. Oh, you oh uh, I think what you, you, you're thinking about is my parents moved here in 1937. And in 39, they bought a home in a neighborhood where we weren't wanted. And we didn't realize it. And on the 19th day of June, they set that house on fire, drug our furniture and stuff out. My parents sent us three or four blocks to Terrell Avenue. Um, and that's where they bought another home years later. But my father came from his job, he had a gun. And the police said if he busted the cap, they would let the mob have us. The newspaper says it's 500 strong and the police couldn't control them. Um, but we survived. And I don't know whether that incident or what has given me the impetus to keep getting people together. If those people had only known that we wanted the same thing they wanted, a decent place to stay, um, a decent school, uh, health care, all the things that they wanted and why they were so upset with us and why people are doing some of the mean, hateful things they do is beyond me. Because I keep saying, we all bleed red blood. We all need and want the same things. I, I am, I just keep saying it over and over again. And some people will catch it that working together will gain and get more achieved than the disunity that's prevalent now. So, Today, we have seen a, it feels like, and I think it's safe to say it's a reality, a renewed hatred almost. I mean, it's almost hard for me to put it into context because you're older than me and you've seen so much more than I have. But when I was younger, I thought by this time, we would have seen an erasure of this type of racism. But it seems like it's getting worse and going back to an era that we thought was gone. What's your take on that? Well, it seems to be a cycle. You know, uh, we were freed. We gained some things. Then we had the area of turmoil with Dr. King and wanting more things. We will, we gain some things, but then we've got the police brutality, the KKK, the, all the really rough things that have come again. And this uh, virus thing is making us realize that 
we are all in the same boat. The virus doesn't decide who, because I'm black or you are white or any of that stuff. And so it's shaking us up. And the young people who are protesting, I wished I was young enough to get out there with them. I can't, as old as I am, I might give them the virus, but those people are making a difference. They are saying no more, no more, no more. We've had enough of it. And I'm hoping those who are in power will listen to them and this doesn't really get out of hand, you know? How, how, how does Trump measure up to other presidents in your view? Uh, he's You're not gonna have me talk about that because you don't want me cussing on your show. <laughs> well, you know, so you actually can if you want. You, no, if you want. no, I'm not gonna do that. But <laughs> you don't have to. But you, you're allowed. <laughs> I, I, I am. Um, I don't know if he's gonna be a catalyst of some kind. If I can get the young people to go vote, 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 get somebody in power who can address the things that are happening to us. And bless his heart, we pray for him. I don't know if the prayer, prayers will be answered like we want them to be answered because we want him out of office. So it's going to, uh, all right. Oh, my. You see there? I'm getting into something that I shouldn't do. You okay. know that? Uh, uh, I told you it's a sensitive topic. But now we have Nico Grimm. In the in the room, Nico. How are you doing today? How Hello, doing? Nico. Hello, Nico. How you doing? Real good. Good to see you. Yeah, great to see you as well. And and I've been good. I've just been uh, you know, doing my part. You know, being a different. Yeah. So we definitely you, man? How you doing? talk about it. How did you guys get together? This is such an interesting combination, but it's actually exactly what we need. We have. To bring our own generations together. It seems like every couple years um, we fight each other because one generation sees things one way and the other half sees it another way. But you guys have really done something incredible here. So speak on your uh, relationship and your partnership and how it all started. Oh yeah, so you know I, I've been I've always been into activism, uh, even when it was feeding people or doing clothes drives and stuff for the kids. And so, you know, I started it a long time ago. And then as things started, you know, approaching 2020 and all the crazy violence that has just been going on against black lives, I've just been, you know, praying and, and looking for ways to connect with people who, you know, are, are going for the same thing that I'm going for, which is, you know, humanitarian rights for all people. And um, somebody that was part of my team was actually familiar with, Miss Opal and uh, you know I we reached out and we got to get on the Zoom and we had a we kicked it off and she just dropped so many gems and kept me so inspired and let let me understand that this is a lifetime you know what I'm saying this is a lifetime but you know we got up I'm, I'm in New York I'm from New York and I know she's over in Texas but you know we're we're coming together to make this happen because Juneteenth needs to be recognized and Black Lives need to be recognized for sure for sure talk about your song. Hard to believe. It's a hard hitting track. Uh, I listened to it last night about three, four times in a row, looking at the lyric sheet, and I was really amazed at how prolific you are on that song. What made you write such a powerful song in you know in an era where with hip hop a lot of it is still doing like there's no pandemic, like the you know there's no revolution or uprising but you're you're really standing on your square and have in the past too not just now um, i think that what really keeps me going is you know i come from hip-hop with my parents you know what i mean and uh, i also work very close with uh, rhapsody so you know and i just came off a tour and i think that you know going on tour and seeing what's been going on i understand that an artist has to reflect the time you know, it's like you have to reflect the times. And also, too, it's just in my nature. I'm somebody adept. I'm somebody who's always seen the bigger picture. So because that's just how I am, my, my music always reflects that. You know what I mean? Like, I have to have the conversations that are going on. 
you know, in the world. And so I feel like that's just what really inspired me. And then also, too, I feel that a lot of people don't know our side of the story. You know right. what I mean? They don't know what you and I have gone through and what we've experienced on the other side of systemic oppression. And so, you know, being being just inspired enough to take it there, you know, and, and just wanting to really leave people with something. Okay. Now, um, Lee, I have to ask you, what, what are your thoughts on, on hip-hop? Hip-hop? Mm-hmm. I've, I've got two left feet, so... I've never learned to dance or to move, but I think it's kind of nice. Like, mm -hmm. if you could move like those young people, wow. Yeah. And the music, the music, I love it. I don't always understand it, but I like mm -hmm. it. Right, right. But I like music, period. Right. Who are your favorite artists? Hip hop? No, any any artist. Oh, any artist. Of course, I'm a Aretha Franklin person and a Nina Simone and oh, oh, I, I, I can just name you lots of them, but they're not coming to mind right now. Okay. Uh, well, that was James Brown. That was his favorite. Oh wow! And and there's a young fella named Nico. Nico. Uh, yeah. Nico, uh, yeah, he's doing something. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 somebody I've learned to like. Do okay. Who, who, Nico, who thank you, you thank five? you very much. Who your top five dead or alive? So, and, top five dead or alive. There's Ooh. a. <sighs> um, I th thank you, Miss Opal. I would say, uh, Big Nas, uh, Jay, um. Kendrick, being honest with you, okay. Um, I'm okay. putting Kendrick in there, and then I would say, uh, do I want? I might give it to Three Stacks, Andre Three Stacks, and, and these are guys I'm just talking about with the pen. I think they're prolific, you know. So, but that's my top right there. My top three is definitely Nas, Jay, and Big. What about you? Who who you got? <laughs> Not me. Uh, you know, I got uh, whew, I got a different list, but I got a historical top five that are alive, and I'll give you my historical top five because that means that's when I was younger and growing up. It's Jay Z, Red Man, um, um, whoa, I'm having a brain freeze right now. Uh, wow. Uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, uh Jay Z. And Red, I'm, I'm going to stop right there because I'm having a brain freeze at the moment. But um, I just, most of those guys are the guys that impacted me most when I was younger. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I don't know why. Oh, Cool G Rap is another one. Cool G Rap. Cool G Rap. Yeah, Cool G Rap is dope. Yeah, yeah, so, I came to it. There's a lot of people from that era. We're going to have to, um, we're, uh, just for the record, Nico, we're going to have you back. Um, for a full-fledged interview so that we can really chop it up, chop it up, because uh, we're talking about Juneteenth. So tell us uh, what Juneteenth means to you and why you've taken this cause on, because it's not something that would be expected from someone of your your age, to be real. Yeah, um, so I think with, with Juneteenth, it really breaks down to, you know, I've never had my day of celebration, you know, and it's like, I feel like a lot of people my age, we're aware of that, but we, we never had the option of Juneteenth. But we just know, yo, we say 4th of July, but, you know, we were still slaves. And, you know, going to the high school that I went to, I went to a Catholic high school. So I got to see firsthand a lot of the systemic oppression. So um, I, I would say that that's what really pushed me to, to go for Juneteenth. I'm like, yo, we need a day that's recognized for us by us. And there's too much that we celebrate all year round. And, you know, that, that doesn't contribute to, you know, black people or represent us. So I think that now it's just time, man. It's time for us to really have a day. It's time for us to be celebrated. And it's time for us, you know, to start moving as a unit and as a culture. And I feel that, you know, it's, it might be surprising to see young people like me on this, but y'all would be surprised. A lot of young people feel exactly how I feel. And that's why we out in the streets. And that's why we out there making it happen. There's been a whole shift of like consciousness and people are just aware right now. So I'm just one of those people. Okay. And Miss 
Oprah Lee, how have you managed, you know, you're a very youthful 90 something year old woman. What, what's your secret? How do you maintain this vibrance? Uh, there's no secret to it. I've been working ever since I can remember. And if you are thinking of yourself, you don't have time to think of others. And from the time I was small, our grandparents taught us that other people who needed things needed to be attended to. My mother would see after people. So it's sort of in your DNA to do what you can for those that you can. And it doesn't have a thing to do with what color you are. I, 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 I just have to help people, period. Uh, that's why I still take food to people who can't get it. They're not all black people. If I can just get you to understand that we need to get together in order to make what our world a better place. And certainly the United States needs to be a better place. But we got to let the young people know the rage the, 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 that they have to channel it, channel it, channel it, and get some people in office by going to vote. Please channel it. I, I keep saying that. I, I love young people. I got so many in my family, it's not even funny. You know, I got about 27 grands and 14 or 15 great grands and one or two great, great grands. And so young people are part of me and, 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 and I embrace them and I don't be unhappy with them. And that Rico kid up there, I'm 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 gonna Nico. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna adopt him. I really. <laughs> I think his famous mother would would admit, but she <laughs> might might let you. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much you eat, Nico. I don't know. Depends on how much you eat. <laughs> oh come on, man! I, I I be eating them out of house and home. Right. <laughs> I know all about that. I have a daughter too. Yeah, me too. We're struggling right now in this uh, quarantine. Aren't we all? I, 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 Juneteenth embraces more than the festival, and the it's got the farm, and, mm -hmm. and, and we do a Santa give away something for Christmas like thing. Um, there's so many components to it, and heaven knows if I could get the youngsters to go to the petition and let us have a million signatures. You go to Juneteenth.us and then you'll get to a link that will show you where the petition is and sign it. Have everybody sign that petition because we want to make Congress aware that this is just not some little old lady in tennis shoes and a small group called NJOF the National Juneteenth Organization that is nationwide. We need them to understand that we are a force that needs to be reckoned with. Amen. Amen. Uh, do you do do you each uh, each of you can you if you can answer this? Do you lose hope? Do you lose faith in this country? And and if you don't, how do you maintain? that optimism? I'd like to answer that. If you are a Christian, or if you're a Muslim, or if you're a Buddhist, or whatever you are, if you have a God you can hold on to, there's no hopelessness doesn't come into your sphere at all. You've got to have an anchor it bothers me that people who commit suicide, they don't have an anchor, nothing to hold on to. I don't even use the word, I don't even have hopelessness in my vocabulary because there's a God up there that's gonna look after you. And, and these things that are happening to us have been going on for centuries. If you read your Bible, 
you know that folk have gone through this kind of stuff before and that they have survived and that they have been able to conquer. And so I believe, I believe that we will survive and that we will be on top. I, I just know it. Okay. What about you, Nico? Yeah, man, I think, you know, there, there's always hope, you know, as long as we're alive and we're breathing. You know, look at the three of us from each of our generations having this conversation. I think that, you know, the, the change is evident. Do I lose faith in the country? The way it's ran, yeah, I think we have to, it has to be a complete radical change from from the ground up. And, and I really mean that, but I think that we're going to be able to do it. I think that Black people, we have the true power. We have the real power right now in this world, and we're just realizing it. So I got all the hope, man. Let's get it. All right. What would you guys like to, what's your vision for the future in closing? What do you hope to see happen? Let's just talk about this year alone. Um, we're seeing tremendous strides in this year alone. Despite all the bad stuff, we've seen certain laws be passed quickly. We've seen some changes in departments in the police, uh, not federally so much, but in local areas. Uh, we've seen a lot of folks, at least on a surface level, embrace Black Lives Matter. Um, what, do you, what do you see us ending up in 2020? I see that those people who've lost their lives will be martyrs to us that we will remember what happened to them and help to make changes, that we will see that we have a government who addresses the disparities in our land. And there are so many, but I hold out hope. I have hope that it's going to change and it is changing, I can see it. You know, I I do have hope, but I think that by the end of 2020, I think that it's probably going to get worse, being honest with you. I think that right now, a lot of, we had, what is it, over 124 um, African-Americans murdered since George Floyd. And mm. um, I think that these numbers are just becoming, they, they're becoming ridiculous. And it's also a sign of the, the, the racist white America is scared right now. They're very scared right now. And that goes back to anybody that's watching, understand the power we have as people. And they are very reactionary to seeing us, you know, use this power to create change. But I think that by the end of 2020, there will be more unity in the black community, you know, more support and actually building and, and cultivating relationships. I think we're gonna see a lot of black dollars staying in, you know what I mean, our community. So that, that, those are the changes I'm really looking forward to. And, you know, hopefully we have as, the least amount of bloodshed as possible. But, I mean, y'all see how they're handling things right now. So, I want I wanted to ask Miss um, Opal Lee one more question about Martin Luther King. Dr. King, when he died, up until his passing, we saw a lot of uh, solidarity from people of all races. Um, and then the riots came after he was murdered. How do you put this into context to what we're seeing right now? Is there any similarities or any uh, differences? You know, what, what would you say the, the comparison between that period of time and now, the civil rights movement and now? Um, what I'm remembering Dr. King saying is that he was not afraid of the people who were being disrupted, who were saying absolutely nothing. The silent folk were the ones that he was afraid of, that we needed to come out of the closet, I guess you say, and make our voice heard. We weren't participating in the worst stuff, but we weren't saying enough about how we could help and what should be doing. And I see people coming out, you know, and saying, hey, 
I, I don't, it's not affecting me, but I don't want it to affect my neighbor. And so we are. Chris, it might be slow for the youngsters, but I can handle slow. I can be patient and I know it comes now, in my lifetime. Okay. All right. Nico, who do you, who do you look up to? You know, I'm, I'm of a certain age that I still looked up to Martin Malcolm. Uh, you know, I wasn't alive when they were alive, but my parents really instilled them in me. Uh, do you have a certain set of leaders or is it still those same gentlemen or even women like Harriet, Rosa, et cetera? Or is it, or is it some you know, Kendrick Lamar and uh, J. Cole? Yeah, I mean, to, I'm going to give you a couple men and I'm going to give you a couple women that, that I really looked up to. So I say Malcolm X, for sure, probably one of my favorites. Um, you know, James Baldwin, um, Bob Marley, you know, Tupac, Kendrick, um, you know, Nipsey, Obama. You know, those are some of the men that, like, I've looked up to as far as, you know, activism and, you know, influencing change for our community goes. And then even with the women, you know, Nikki Giovanni, you know, Asada Shakur, you know what I'm saying? Um, we have uh, Bell Hooks, Maya Angelou, you know, uh, Rhapsody. You know, these are all women, too, that have, you know, done a lot for it. So I think that, like, you know, I have a big pool of people I stay inspired from. So, mm. you know, they, they all did it. Nice, nice. Shout out to Rhapsody. Uh, I love I love Rhapsody. We got to get her um back on all hip-hop again. She's pro prolific is yeah. a statement, I think, at this point. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, uh, when I did her tour, uh, she had the black woman created this tour. And, okay. you know, just watching her set, because she goes on for like an hour. And, yeah. you know, just seeing her break it down the whole time, no breaks. I'm like, yo, you're the illest. <laughs> she's she's dope, man. But I missed that tour. And when it, I think, came to Brooklyn. Yeah, it definitely came to Brooklyn. And Cy Rock. Yeah, it did. I missed it, man. I wanted mm -hmm. to I know, I actually know uh, Cy Rock's husband, and we're we're all cool, really. But I, I wanted to take my daughter to that tour because she's followed all these artists through, uh, you know, us listening. So, you know, we got to uplift those sisters way more than we do. And I don't mean us, I mean everybody. You know, the same way we see Nikki and others, we need them right next to them. Um, so I just wanted to say... Yeah. In closing, uh, do you all have any final words? Uh, anything that you would like to leave us with with this uh, conversation, Juneteenth? You know, pretty much generally, what would you tell folks? I tell the young people to channel their energy into getting to go and vote. I I would tell them to see that their parents and their relatives go and vote or get it by mail. Don't let anybody tell you that their vote doesn't matter. You know, we have been so apathetic. It doesn't make any difference. But to see that people vote, I can't stress it enough that if they go for the July 14th, um, what is it, runoff election, and they would do a surge and they would vote, would give us some idea of what they're going to do in November. So my, my last words are, you can make a difference. Everybody pulling together can make a difference. That's what I want to leave with them. Nico? Yeah, um, I would just tell people continue to be the difference. Um, I'll be having starting on Juneteenth. I'll have a seven day program that's going to be on my Instagram live on um, my IGTV. And uh, it's going to be called Power Hour. And we'll have seven days where we're acknowledging the seven, you know, pillars of, you know, black culture. So I would say everyone be on the lookout for that. Uh, and also, you know, continue to raise awareness for Juneteenth as a holiday. Go to Juneteenth, you know, dot US to, you know, sign the petition, you know, we got to make sure that we have everybody involved and that, you know, we'll continue to just push it. So just be, be on the lookout and continue to be the difference and do that work in your community.
Amazing. I just want to say thank you to both of you. This is a, an amazing, a wonderful conversation, man. It's been a real pleasure. And it's really representative of what we need to continue to do is to join forces and really be unified in, in conversation and in deed. And Nico, you guys keep going out, hitting those streets. I've been chilling because, uh, yeah, I'm getting a little older. I put, you know that. <laughs> I put in my work. <laughs> and yeah. and Mr. Wow. you have absolutely put in your work and continue to do so. So you're an inspiration to all of us. And we don't get tired. We just keep going. So I just want to say thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Nico. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yes, Miss Opal. You have a great one. Enjoy the rest of the day. All right. Both of you. Thank Love you. Man. Salute. Yeah. We, we salute. will talk again. I can salute. Yes, you can. I appreciate that. <laughs>